Belizean powder buns or powder buns is a cross between a cake and a cookie. So it's the best of both worlds. I learned how to make these in homemade class in Belize when I was like 12 years old. But the original recipe does not call for any eggs. Later on throughout the years, people started to add eggs. So of course I had to try. And so I call these ones the light powder buns. Some people have reached out to me to tell me that they're having a little bit of trouble making the ones with the eggs because the powder buns are coming out rock hard. So I want to take this time to show you guys exactly how to make the powder buns with the eggs. You're watching the Bear Pantry Show. This is how I measure the flour guys. I fluff it up first and then I scoop and I scrape off the excess with this straight edge knife. So we need four cups and if you notice I store my flour in buckets. This is number two. If you scoop it up and you see some air pockets in between, just go ahead and toss it back out of the cup, scoop it again and measure, all right? What you don't want to do is this. You don't want to pick it up like this and then shake it off, all right? Just scoop loosely and then scrape off the top. Now we need a little bit extra for when we start rolling off the powder buns, all right? Let's go ahead and measure the sugar. It's granulated white sugar and I store this in buckets again. And this cup measures one and a half cups, but if you don't have a cup like this, just use a one cup measurement and a half cup measurement, okay? Let's get it on the counter, and then we're going to measure out the baking powder, and it's supposed to be four tablespoons. Let me show you my tablespoon. Come on camera, focus, focus, focus. Okay, this is the second one. Let's get my big tub out the way I was filling the small bin from the big tub. So here's number four. And I've had this tub since I think 2020. Now this recipe calls for eggs and these eggs are medium sized. The original recipe doesn't call for any eggs but I've been doing this one for a while now and I have it in my book where I call this the light powder bun and you put the eggs in it. I like this one a whole lot better than the original because the powder buns are really soft. So I'm not going to use evaporated milk because I'm lactose intolerant so I'm going to use lactose milk and I'm going to measure 10 ounces okay and then half a cup of butter soften to room temperature my butter is salted so i'm not going to add any salt i already have a teaspoon of cinnamon in with my dry ingredients and i'm just going to go ahead and grease my baking sheets the best time to buy baking sheets is during the christmas season at costco all right so let's get the butter in here you notice i already added the sugar right and now the vanilla one teaspoon and then we're going to get started by whisking the eggs. As I was telling you guys about the baking sheets at Costco, during the Christmas season, they sell it like a kit. We have the cooling rack and some utensils and stuff like that, okay? So I haven't bought any in years, but I'm going to buy some this year because these ones that I have are kind of old now. So let's get the butter worked into the dry ingredients. Ten long years ago, I published my first cookbook of recipes from my home country of Belize. My cooking show, The Bear Pantry Show, was created based on that book. Seven years later, I redid the book, removed some of the recipes that I didn't deem to be authentic enough, and added about 30 brand new recipes that are easy to follow, budget-friendly, authentic, and comes out perfect each time. Matter of fact, it comes out perfect the first time. Get your copy today only from www.bearpantryshow.com. Shop safely and securely at www.bearpantryshow.com. Then we're gonna add the eggs, all right? So I feel like that's worked in enough. Let me make like a little well and add my whisked eggs in. Scoop it all out, we want every drop of it. Get this worked around. Comment below and let me know what you put in your powder buns. Normally we will add raisins, but I don't have any today, so I'm not gonna add any. But I've tried other things too. I've tried craisins, which is dried cranberries. I've tried regular um, milk chocolate and I've tried white chocolate, well, chocolate chips. I've tried white chocolate chips and milk chocolate chips. But I didn't like the milk chocolate chips in it, but I loved the white chocolate chips in it, okay? So you want to try other stuff. I mean, Belizeans are going to tell you, oh, that's not authentic. So what? You try it the way you like it, right? You notice I'm adding the milk very slowly, even though I measured it out precisely. 
because it depends on the size of the egg. Sometimes it will get too wet and you won't need all that milk, all right? So see some drying, um, I was going to say dry ingredients, some dry spots here. Add some more milk to the dry and just get it worked in. I don't like to do this with a stand mixer even when I used to use my stand mixer because you can't feel it to see how wet it's getting. I don't use gloves when I do this either because it's just going to be a sticky mess on the gloves. See some dry spot here again and just add some more of the milk. And I think I'm going to hold back this amount. It's almost about an ounce. I'll measure it in a little while for you guys to see, okay? I feel like this feels wet enough. And normally when I'm, you know, doing my videos like this, I will just like roll off a couple and then cut, you know, to the last batch. But I'm going to spend some time to show you guys how this is done because I want you to feel like if you're here with me and I'm teaching you step by step how to do this because somebody called and asked me, you know, to help them with the powder bun because it was giving them trouble. And I did this video for them personally. They have this video personally, you know, where I'm talking to them. But this, you know, I'm talking to a whole bunch of you, right? <laughs> so just go ahead and roll it off. Get some more flour on it if it feels sticky, guys. And then set it on the top end of the baking sheet. This is supposed to give you 16, but every time I make powder buns, I always get only 15. The only way I can get 16 is if I flatten the dough out on a surface and then cut it into fractions. All right? Four first, then eight, then 16. So it doesn't matter because I'm not selling these, so I'm not going to weigh them and all that stuff. It is what it is. Some of them are going to be big and some of them are going to be small, right? So see how I'm just kind of rolling them off? And every time it's getting too sticky, I just floor it some more. So you want to start with your two ends first. Well, your four ends, your four corners. And then that way you can go ahead and set the powder buns in the middle part and you can get eight on the baking sheet, okay? So you don't have to like move them and reseat them when you do it like this. And if it's getting annoying on your hands where it's too sticky, just go ahead, stop, and wash your hands, dry them off, and then come back and continue. Notice I told you guys to start with the four corners and I didn't finish that fourth corner. It's bugging you, right? <laughs> it's bugging me. <laughs> yeah. A friend of mine told me that in Africa where she's from, they call these rock buns because they crack on the top when you bake them. Usually when somebody's going to take a trip, either by road or by plane, I'll make a batch of these for them. And even when we took our trips to Belize, I just made a whole lot. I remember one time I was going to uh, go to Belize with my mom and dad and my aunt Jenny and Jada, and I just made a batch for everybody to have their own little bag to put in their purse and hold on to the pot of bun because they don't feed you anything on the planes. You know, you're hungry. And usually when we open these to eat it anywhere, it smells so wonderful that people kind of turn around and look. I remember one of my cousins, he's so ratchet. He came here years ago and I made him a batch of these to take back on the train with him. And he was actually selling these things on the train to the passengers. <laughs> he kept some for himself and he was selling some. I'm like, oh my God, why? <laughs> All right, there we go. First tray with eight. Let me show you. One ounce was left behind. So now we're going to get it in the oven. Well, I've had it in the oven for 30 minutes already, guys. <laughs> and I'm going to remove the top tray because it's done. And I'm going to move up the second row to the top and let it go three more minutes. See how soft it is? And they will get stuck together like this, okay? They'll spread and get stuck together. Don't worry. They're cooked. See, these are done. So it took a total of 30 minutes for the top and 33 for the bottom. And it, this all depends on your stove. You know, it could be 35 to 40 minutes for you, okay? See how they're cracked? Remove them, like, almost immediately. They don't have to sit like cookies. Put them on your wire cooling rack, see? Soft. And they take only about 7 to 10 minutes to cool. 
and you want to go ahead and store them right away in a cake thing like this or a plastic bag Ziploc bags see it's cracked mm -hmm. I'm moving these ones cover it up and it'll stay fresh like this for almost a week I'm making a bag for Jory and Esther now look at this I'm gonna start over again let me clear everything out the way the reason that I want to start over again is because I want to use bigger eggs and see how much less milk that sounds wrong right how much less milk we're gonna have to use in this next batch so I have all my dry ingredients here again and I have my butter measured again I've washed everything and started over see these eggs are huge they're bigger and I've got this time around I've only measured out eight ounces of milk why because I measured out ten the last time and with the medium-sized eggs I only used nine so I'm gonna go with eight and see how we go all right and now we're gonna get it worked into our dry ingredients but we're gonna add the vanilla first you know, the whole time I was doing this, I didn't think I had any raisins. But then Joe reminded me after I was done that he bought raisins. Soften butter. Don't use cold butter. Just go ahead and get it worked into the dry ingredients. I'm trying to find a way to put my fork so I don't have to put it on the counter. Dump the eggs in. And like I said, the original recipe doesn't call for eggs, so then you would definitely use the whole can of evaporated milk if you were using evaporated milk, right? And the can holds, I think, 12 ounces. So you just want to feel it, not eyeball. You want to feel it, all right? I'm working it around. And I'm kind of wondering if I'm going to need more milk. It's getting sticky, it's getting there. I want to show you, see? Still needs more. And my mom used all types of milk when she was doing this. Sometimes she would mix the powdered clim with water and use clim. She would use needle. Just anything that she could find if she ran out of. Because she didn't used to keep like milk in the fridge. You know, she... um. She just had like powdered milk around the house or canned milk. So she would use any kind of milk she found. And the powder buns used to come out wonderful. When I was a little kid and we lived in Belize, my uncle Mike had a shop, right? A grocery store. And my mom used to make powder buns to sell in the grocery store. My dad used to have to go deliver it. And every time he would arrive, there would be a long line wrapped around, you know, the, the store and down the street over there by Euphrates on Amara Avenue and people would yell the powder bun man to come <laughs> my dad would get so mad he says I'm not no damn powder bun man <laughs> anyway so you see me here rolling it off right same thing that I did earlier roll it off and put it on the grease baking sheet and we get 15 again and I put them in the oven Set the timer for 30. My oven is working really, really good right now too, see? 30 minutes for the top row, 33 for the second row. And they're soft. No rock hard pull the buns here, guys. Showing you all the stuff I have. So I have what? 28 powder buns. I gave Jory six. I'm gonna give a batch to the neighbors across the street. Because we're not going to keep all these things in here and get fat right before Christmas. Oh no. See how soft it is, guys? Seven days. This is seven days later, and I want to show you what I did. I put one of the powder buns in the Ziploc bag because Joe wanted to see how long it would stay fresh. So let's see. It's still soft, but not as soft as the first couple of days. So let's bite. Okay. Mmm. It's still good. What I'm going to do, put it back in this bag and then check on it again 
in the next few days. I'm not going to wait a whole week, but in the next few days. As we progress with this, I'm going to come back in the comments section and let you guys know how long it took to one, go bad, where you might see like green stuff on it, and two, get super stale. All right, we're going to see how long it lasts. All right, so thank you for watching, guys. If you like this video, check out this one right here that I have lined up for you. Bye. This is the Beth Andrew Show.